The really cool thing about playing Civilization 5 is there's so many great factions to choose from that I genuinely think I'm just going to roll those dice and uh, see what I get. Is this a joke? Well, this looks like a pretty good place to start. Hang on one second. There we go, much better. Things started off pretty well for the uh, city of High Wycombe and the Kingdom of France. We found some ruins, made some scouts, and did a bit of exploring. We quickly found out that our closest neighbour was the Vatican City, which is weird because Catholicism and indeed religion as a concept hadn't been invented yet. It didn't take long for us to find even more ruins and... Oh, your majesty. So very pleased to meet you. I offered the Queen of England a declaration of friendship, which she declined because she was playing hard to get. Then I graciously let her take some ruins that I found, because I thought it would be a good way to solidify our bond moving forwards. The Queen and I decided to divvy up our resources equally to deal with the ongoing barbarian problem that had been happening basically everywhere for all of time. Acknowledging the bravery of my warriors and me for commanding them, she offered to pay me one gold per turn to accept an embassy in my capital. Shortly after this, we were declared the 12th most literate state in the whole world. We adopted the tradition cultural policy to allow us to build world wonders quickly so that people from all around the world would come to visit our capital. In the year of 2680 BC, our dear friend and ally Queen Elizabeth entered the classical era and I'm sure we won't be far behind. Oh, looks like somebody else entered it too. And here comes another one. <laughs> wow guys, uh, save some room in the classical era for the rest of us, huh? Since nobody had built Stonehenge yet, I thought I'd give it a bash. Ooh, that was close. I thought someone had beat me to Stonehenge, but it's just the Terracotta Army, it's fine. Oh. Never mind then, I, I guess. Back to, back to square one. Just as things seemed to be at their most dire, I had a sudden and drastic change of fate. First, I discovered that Elizabeth and I were not alone on this continent, as I encountered the Japanese. Even though my society was still too primitive to know what an embassy was, they were still willing to pay me one gold per turn to have one in my capital. I also discovered the lost city of El Dorado, but that wasn't on purpose. It did, however, give me an idea. What if I were to build a second city? A city much like High Wycombe, only further away and right next to El Dorado. I wasted no time sending some settlers to found the new city. I only hoped I'd be able to get there before the Japanese did. The race to El Dorado had begun. At this point I learned that I was ever so slightly behind the other countries when it came to military prowess. This was a cause for concern. As my settlers proceeded to nobly barrel through uncharted jungle, I discovered that El Dorado lay just beyond the Japanese border. Would they allow such an intrusion to go unpunished? It was too late to turn back now, and in the year of 1800 BC, the city of Par the city of Le Dorado was founded. As far as I could tell, it looked like I'd just barely beaten the Japanese to it. I knew that their wrath would be terrible, their retribution swift. Meanwhile, Elizabeth took the opportunity to found Hastings at a location that was quite blatantly within my borders. Not literally within my borders, but within where I would like my borders to be. As soon as I figure out what this wheel thing I've just discovered is for, she's going to get a lesson. I realised that nobody had yet built the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, and I thought to myself, what if they were the Hanging Gardens of High Wycombe? I got my best scientists on the case straight away. As soon as we figured out what Matz was, we were going to build those gardens. I soon learned that the Japanese had built the city of Nara right next to Le Dorado. What were they up to? What were they planning? And then a golden age dawned. The Japanese offered me furs in exchange for silk. I dared not refuse. As my finest scientists finally came to a consensus about what mathematics was, I undisputedly entered the classical era in the year 1160 BC, several hundred years behind everyone else, but I got there in the end. To celebrate this monumental achievement, I ordered that work begin on the Hanging Gardens of High Wycombe immediately. I started doing all that fiddly stuff you can do in Civ to make your cities build things quicker, hoping and praying that I would be the first one to complete this world wonder. Although my golden age had ended, the city of Le Dorado had grown, allowing me to put some civilians straight to work on the ancient city of El Dorado, giving me plus five culture every turn. 
I had a small heart attack when the Parthenon got built somewhere because I thought it looked a bit like the Hanging Gardens, but it wasn't the Hanging Gardens, so it's fine. By this point, Japan was so advanced that it was able to attract tourists, presumably through the power of anime. In a truly unexpected twist, the Japanese asked if I wanted to be friends, and I said yes. With each new wonder that was built, I grew closer and closer to becoming the sole owner of the Hanging Gardens. Other civilizations had begun to enter the medieval era, but I didn't care, because I had a goal, my eyes were on the prize, and I was making excellent progress. Since Japan and I were officially friends, I can only assume that the city of Azumo was built as a monument to our friendship. I knew that I was mere turns away from completing the Hanging Gardens and finally having some kind of achievement to my